I'm going to share with you some of my experience on DNA sequencing. Um, I'm also a chemist, but inorganic chemist, so, so you, it's so awkward. So, so I, I knew, I, I saw some high school students there, so I would share with you. I, I didn't have any interest in DNA for almost 30 years, but still get a chance to work on DNA and sequencing specifically. If Shankar says he did this by stento, uh, I, I would say I would start with some big accident. See? Uh, it started from about like 22 years ago. I was about to graduate as a coming PhD of inorganic chem uh, chemistry. I sent an email to Sunny. I read all of his beautiful papers on single molecule and also SRS uh, image imaging. Uh, I want to apply a postdoc position in Sunny's group. And he replied very quickly, very politely, no. <laughs> so I had to seek an, an alternate uh, opportunity. So I, I end up at Caltech, which is very important to me, it's vital. I'm working on optoelectronics in this building, Watson building. It's not a Jim Watson building, it's IBM's Watson building, right? But close enough. Uh, so it's vital I start to gain my engineering scientific, scientific thinking. So think of something more uh, practical. The neighbor group of my group, the group I'm working, it's a, it's a group uh, led by uh, Steve Quake. It's a bioengineering group. So one of his guys, Ido uh, Broslovsky, was doing single molecule imaging. That was my dream, right? So, so I, 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 I talked to him, I said, I want to see your setup. So I ended up saw his setup in his lab doing some single molecule imaging. I didn't know what, what he was doing there, but it turned out it's a paper published later that year. It's a single molecule sequencing experiment. So that's probably the closest uh, t uh, uh, possibility. Like I get to uh, uh, get uh, has some, some, some personal interaction with the DNA sequencing. And this uh, method turned out to be a company called Helicos. So three years later, ironically, I became Steve's poster. It's my second term as poster. So I started working with DNA, but he didn't allow me to do the sequencing. He said, go to do synthesis. So I uh, DNA, for me, it's, a, it's just a chemical structure. It doesn't really mean anything to me. It's just chemical structure, right? Interestingly, during my last month staying at Stanford, uh, it's September 2006, I had nothing to do there in the lab. So I found a Bible in the lab, written by many artists. It's totally new to me. So I read some of this, I learned some interesting stuff I never learned before. So I end up had an idea how to, how to make a error-free gene from some, some, some non-purified short articles. And I did, them, in my life, I did the two very first experiments the chemical reactions with enzymes I never used before. It's one, it's a ligation, use ligase. Second, it's a PCR, use polymerase. So then, uh, the student at the time, I didn't know what sequencing was, right? And four years later, uh, in 2010, suddenly decided to establish a research institute at Peking University called Biopic. Uh, and I was lucky to work with him, finally, after nine years waiting. Since I sent him the, the application letter, so now I, I earned the chance to work with Sunny. Uh, the one of the major tasks at that time is to recruit a rising star named Fu Shou Tang. I didn't know this guy, but I heard he was so good. So we we had to do everything we could to get this guy to join us. Uh, why is that? Because at that time he just published a paper with an industry collaborator, Kai Qing Lao, sitting over there. And, Photos there, right? showing that doing RNA sequencing from a single cell is possible. And, and one of the key components here, it's actually, it's a sequencer, it's the, it's the team that's led by Kai Qing at ABI. So now it became very clear. If you want to get a food show, you want to buy a sequencer. Uh, what to buy? It's very natural at that time in, on market, you have three Choices, it's 454, helicos, or solid. And just at that time came with a new choice. It's called high sick from Illumina. And I immediately studied the spec of high sick and thought this should be the right choice at that time. And it turned out it was a correct choice because in the past few years, 
you saw all this three all left the market. Okay. And beautifully, this this sequence chemistry is so beautiful, and I, I like so much. And uh, it's already concealed by Shankar, you already mentioned, and David back in 1997. It's truly a groundbreaking and innovative idea. Right. Just four days ago, uh, two former trainees from Shankar's group uh, published a historical perspective in Nature Biotechnology and digging into this chemistry, elegant, efficient, right? yet as always demanding a substantial amount of the improvement of work and numerous irritations of engineering uh, modifications. Right? And one of the authors, Professor Krishnan at Chicago, uh, she said one, uh, a sentence I like a lot, because we learn more deeply by asking why something is the way it is, rather than just knowing what the solution is, especially in chemistry. Right? I, I completely agree with this. I like this sequence of chemistry by myself. So recently my group has developing uh, this uh, spatial sequencing method uh, collaborated with Jian Bing Wang at Tsinghua University. And also this young generation of, of the students in my group, uh, Tian Yi, Wu Ji, Men Chen, and Ji Zhou, they chose Shanker's chemistry to do this sequencing in, in, the, in, the, in the tissue. So the idea is we like this sequencing a lot because we can purchase the commercial available reagent, very robust, and very quickly you can turn around this reaction cycle, right? And, and then we pick 108 genes. Uh, we can get about 36 million transcripts uh, and, uh, and also can uh, assign them to 150,000 cells within a day. A, a clona section, pure, uh, a complete clona section. It's essentially just build your own sequencing machine uh, in a lab. The one key uh, vital idea is we actually uh, invented a block code, a uh, hybrid block code, uh, 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 mathematics to code all these genes. So simply put it this way, you just add more code and to couple with two-color SBS chemistry invented by uh, Illumina, and then this way you can have the silent bit to increase the harmony distance between the code. And then another good thing about this one, why we want to use hybrid barcode? One actual reason is that with a large humming distance between the barcode, then you can further solve these polyclone problems. For example, for those dots that merge together when you do a 2D projection, now you can really resolve them into two different uh, uh, codes just without any problem. A, a, a sequencing error will be uh, compromised as well. This is an example where we do this. We have this whole section taking about more than 500 uh, tiles, and uh, uh, we do 21 cycles, 20 cycles of the sequencing imaging, uh, 10 cycles of sequencing, 20 cycles of imaging, and one cycle of the DAPI staining for the nuclei. Then we take this raw data. So from sample to result, less than a day, we can get this image. And this gives you 108 gene list here. And if you just put all the gene dots, this gives the shape of the brain very clearly. And then, then you can do, do the, this decoding and then assign all this into the cells. We get this 113,000 uh, uh, QC cells with high quality. And most of them, uh, most of these uh, neuron cells, they are the excitatory neurons. And non-neuron cells can be divided into astrocytes, microglia, oligodendrocytes as well. And all this, they, they packed in a way you expected, so nothing uh, uh, unexpected, but there's something new we can get from this in-situ sequencing using, Sang uh, sorry, using Shankar's chemistry. Here, you find the dot right there at, at the right position in the cell. So you can do an analysis and find how this uh, distribution unevenly distributes the transcript associated with a certain other molecules, for example, a beta from the AD mouse model. So you know certain genes in certain cells, they actually will have the tendency to align closer to the A beta and certain will not. Uh, and this is definitely distance uh, related. Okay, it is also interesting experience in your life. If your previous boss knows your future boss and they were good friends and know each other's work. So long ago, 14 years ago, in a midnight here, 2 a.m., October 30th, I received an email from Steve Quake say, Yan Yi, Sunny has developed some nice nucleotides. You should talk to him about making a microfluidic 
non-single cell, uh, sorry, non-single molecule sequencer. Steve always has this analogy, say making a sequencer just you, that's like combining two machines, one's microscope, one's dishwasher. So you pump liquid in and out, to raise temperature high and low, then you observe what's happening in, in this dishwasher. And it's quite true, actually. And the chemistry Steve mentioned in the email was published later by Sunny's group. Uh, uh, the two of those uh, authors, uh, Will Greenleaf there, and Haifeng, some were sitting there, they were all in the audience. It was a prototype that, that can generate a 30 base sequence. And the chemistry is the phlogenic SBS chemistry, so you can make this unnatural substrate. Uh, it's, a, it's a base, tetraphosphate, uh, with a with a, with a fluorophore attached to the end of this tetraphosphate. And when they incorporate into the DNA, they relieve this uh, fluorophore uh, uh, conjugated uh, triphosphate. And it, the, this fluorophore here is not fluorescent at all. Uh, actually, faint, uh, weakly fluorescent. And then if we use alkyne phosphatase, phosphatase in the system, they will chop off all this phosphate, phosphate and then release this highly fluorescent fluorophore. So that's how you turn the, the, the signal from off to on. Right? So Haifeng is an uh, organic chemist. So he left Sunny to join my team a few years later. And we together trained another uh, set of the young generation of the engineering scientists. Uh, Zitian sitting here and Chao Shuo also sitting here. And the other two, Wen Xiong and Li. They all together came out with the idea how to do a sequencer. It's real sequencer, high throughput. Uh, and then we, we turn this into a new uh, name called the error correction code sequencer. Why is that? It's that we, we put in nucleotide, not a, a, any given nucleotide by any uh, already designed single nucleotide, but you, you just put in two, make a mixture of two nucleotides together. So every time you, you get sequence these two nucleotides all together, and you get the result of the mixture the information. So the information is not sufficient enough to give you the unambiguous sequence, but it's enough to give you a certain sequence we call the degenerate sequence. And if you have three of these degenerate sequence from a single unknown uh, template, then you can deduce it. Any of these two will give you a result. So if you see the conflict between this deduction, you know something wrong there. And that's the error, sequencing error. You can catch it, and you can also correct it if mathematically you, you know how to do it. So it, uh, the my team is great, but the prototype still uh, uh, requires certain time to develop, right? It has been quickly evolved, but still took many years to, uh, from this to something it's working like a real machine. So you're taking tiles of images one by one all together. And then just give you an example. You take many images. And every image is 1.3 millimeter by 1.3 millimeter. It all look like this. And if you zoom in, you see this bright spot and, and faint spot and, and dark spot. That means you that tell you how many nuclei get, get to be incorporated in each cycle. And then you have this sequence, degenerate sequence. And go through the right mathematics. You can actually deduce this sequence. Uh, 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 solve these problems caused by the defacing, that's the asynchronization of the clonal amplification and the reaction. And then, if you have three of these sequences, you can go through another mathematical deduction to give you the most possible correct uh, sequence without any error. And just give you one of the uh, results we, we got uh, a couple of years ago. Now we can have this high throughput sequencer generate uh, the, the accuracy higher than Q40, that means like, uh, the error is less than 0.01%. And then uh, um, the highest uh, rate uh, number here can go to about Q45. And this error, this, the smallest error rate, give us confidence we can call. Uh, those mutations can never been called before by other sequencing uh, method. For example, here, use of conventional cyclic reverse terminator chemistry, you still have these residual errors coming from the sequencing chemistry uh, in, in perfection, but now all these uh, errors here most are left by this uh, DNA uh, deamination, DNA damages. It's, it's naturally happened uh, upon the, when you're making a library for sequencing. Uh, if you cut the grass, like uh, 
just short enough, now you can see the ship behind that. So if we can uh, suppress this the sequence of noises to another um, order of magnitude, now we can see these true uh, um, uh, mutations that uh, embedded in your sample. We also start thinking about how about we just take one round of sequence, not just three rounds to do this error correction, and can this information be valuable? And uh, think about this. This is the single nuclear addition chemistry, like 454 four, Antarctic did. In every cycle, red cycle, they generated 1.3 bit of information, extended the nucleotide 0.7 uh, basis. And uh, Shanker's chemistry uh, can actually be much better than this one. They generate two bits of information per cycle and extend to one nuclear. That's why even this chemical is more sophisticated than this one. We still like to use this because the information efficiency is much higher by doing so, right? And we are thinking about this one. If we only take this phylogenetic chemistry and sequence one uh, degenerative sequence, one round, and the chemical is simpler, and we still get per cycle two bit of the information extension. And interestingly, now we, every cycle, in average, we have two nucleotide extension, much faster, much faster. Why we need this? And it, just with this faster sequencing, if you get enough length of a fragment, you can do resequencing perfectly. You, if it's a, it's a simple new, uh, genome, you can map back without any error. If it's more complicated, like human genome, you can still map back without any error. Here, it's, we'll compare with the bit sick with uh, the other sequencing method. You can capture all these small copy number versions without any difference. And also, we can do an IPT, the non-invasive prenatal test. Uh, uh, Dennis is here. Right? We took this maternal blood. We can do all this experiment. It seems like it, they gave you the identical result as any other sequencer can give. We can also do RNA-seq. It's totally unsurprised because if you can do whole genome sequencing, of course you can do RNA-seq. Right? We also give uh, another more challenging, uh, challenging uh, t uh, uh, test. So we can we see if we can do metagenomics because now the genome comes with all different kind of the complexity. And it turned out that you can use this one round of the sequencing, BitSeq, can also map pretty well to many different kind of genomes and give the idea how this uh, uh, metagenome uh, population uh, distribute in this sample. Now, after 80 years of engineering, uh, now we have this robust machine can provide a high accuracy uh, up to Q45 using the er error correction mode. And we can do the resequencing using very fast mode. Uh, can, 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 can this be done within uh, four hours? What next? Actually, now think about the chemistry. If we can work in on the full extension, what should we do? We can add uh, two different uh, dye molecules to two different nucleotides we add in as a mixture in the same round of experiment. Right? We call this a super beta sick. Now, in every single reaction cycle, we can extend the still two nucleotides, but the information we received will be 70% enhanced to the 3.4 bit. So this enhancement is huge. This gives us a, a more freedom to do something we could never done before. For example, we first developed this uh, new dye called picking orange because the older dye is Tokyo green. Now it's picking orange, right? We couple them together. This new dye has been synthesized to uh, go through this uh, series of engineering. Now can be with very high quality and uh, yield. And if we have two color, now we can we can map him back to the uh, reference genome and capture all these single nucleotide variations that could, could be missed by only using BetaSeq. Now it's two color, you have super bit sick, 3.5, 3.4 bit per cycle. You can extend very long. The sequencing, the sequencing uh, reaction cycle reduction fold means how many cycles you can reduce the, by doing this experiment will be reduced twice. So in shorter time, you get enough information to do the resequencing and capture all this single nucleotide variations. I just give you one example here. We, 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 we found a few clinical samples. Uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, 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 variation inside this COVID-19 patients, and we can capture all this uh, in intra-host variation very identically using super beta -sick and the conventional uh, reverse terminator chemistry. Okay, I will stop here by thanking all the students and collaborators working 
uh, with me uh, in the past uh, 17 years. And, and this uh, major people uh, I talked about today has been highlighted here. Thank you very much.